Let's take a quick look at portable air conditioning units. Hi everyone. So firstly, before I get into this, it really helps the channel if you can like and subscribe the videos. So please take the opportunity now, just below the video is the word subscribe and a thumbs up. So please use that. Today we're gonna have a look at portable air conditioning units and the reason is they are significantly lighter than built-in ones, they're more disruptive. You can take them with you only when you need. So the built-in ones, typically what happens is you have to sacrifice some part of your ceiling in order to drill a big hole and put the air condition unit in. They weigh probably around 40 kilos, maybe 50 kilos depending on the model, and they are always on the van. So even in the winter, you're carrying around this 40 kilograms part of your payload. Um, so what we've decided to do, at least for now, is to go with the Eurom AC2401, very catchily named, um, Call My Camper is another way uh, uh, reference for it, um, portable air conditioning unit. <clears throat> this weighs about 20 kilos, 21, 22, something like that, and you only take it with you when you need it. It hangs over one of the windows, so you've got an outdoor part which rejects the heat and an indoor part that brings in the cooled cold air and there is a, um, a permanent ribbon between the two through which the water that is collected through the condenser in the internal uh, fan that goes out to the external unit and gets dropped outside so you shouldn't have any issues with water spilling inside the van. So let's have a look at ours. Um, I've only recently installed it. I've installed it in um, the side window in the kitchen. Let's have a quick look. Okay, so this is the internal unit um, just here. <coughs> um, let's turn it on. And that's already putting out quite cold air straight away. We've got it on the highest setting and you can probably hear the noise. Um, it's similar to a fan basically, um, but you can change it between different set point targets of temperature and also you can put it on a lower speed which reduces the sound quite a lot, maybe for night time. But still not that noisy. Uh, I think it's entirely suitable to sleep through. Um, and doesn't take up too much room, although it's definitely going to get in the way of using the hob. It's going to make it tighter anyway, let's put it that way. My thoughts are though that typically when the weather's nicer, you're doing less cooking inside, more barbecue cooking, more sitting outdoors, so actually consuming a bit of space in the kitchen isn't the end of the world. Right, let's take a look at this ribbon that goes from the inside to the outside and how that works. So this ribbon is permanently connected, you cannot disconnect it and it does make it slightly more cumbersome to move around because the inside unit and the outside unit have to stay together the whole time. As you can see we've got the windows closed but only on the first latch in order to allow the space for this internal ribbon to go out. Let's take a look at the outside unit. Okay, so this is the outside unit that vents out the hot air. Actually, I thought it was going to be through this part, but it, the hot air actually comes out through the side here. And you've got this bracket that hangs over the window. Okay, so we're in a Swift motorhome. Let me show you something about the windows and in particular the blinds and how they work. So on this window we've got the blinds closed and they tuck away down at the bottom. Now on this window you can see it slightly protrudes. So if that clamp were coming over here it would probably be permanently pushing down on that which I'm slightly uncomfortable with. 
The difference in the kitchen window is that actually it sits a little lower or doesn't seem to cause so much of an issue anyway. You can see that there's a, a bit of metal here that lifts it up and it's not, there's a, I can put my finger in here, my, small, my little finger anyway, it's not actually pushing down on this. So it works on this window but I'm not sure it would work on all the windows. One other problem that we found is in order to get the unit installed you have to pass either the internal unit from outside in or the external unit from inside out. Now the internal unit is slightly smaller so it's easier to fit that to pass this into the van than it is to put that larger unit out <clears throat> and on this window which is quite a small window it's actually impossible this the outside unit is too big to fit going out so you have to pass this one in and that's where this cable this ribbon becomes a bit of a pain because you're hanging up this one and you need a partner really to be holding on to this whilst you're hanging this on because there isn't root there isn't the distance to have this lying on the floor really whilst you're hanging this up a lot of people on larger windows put this in place and then hang the external unit from inside out but as I say it won't work on this window. The other thing that I had to do was I actually had to disconnect the arm that normally holds the window open because as you can see when it does that the, the gap here isn't big enough to pass the internal unit through. I needed to open the window further. I needed to be able to open it fully wide. So I need to sort something out with that. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. Either I think I'm going to remove this bracket completely or um, come up with some sort of system so that this isn't Otherwise, we're just going to round these holes out by taking the screws in and out the whole time. So this is the external unit, and this is the hole by which the water comes out. Now, what they recommend is when you want to move the internal unit, that there might still be some residue water in there that hasn't been pumped out. because It's not constantly pumping the water out. It does it when it fills up. And there is a small bung in the bottom of the unit that you need to pull out in order to drain the water so they recommend that once it's been on leave it for 20 minutes to allow the air to allow those icicles to melt and then pull the bung and let the water out so we're going to do that now and we're going to do it over the sink now it says not to turn these upside down but I do need to work out where the bung is ah. Right, it's just here. So let's, this is what I'm saying about the this ribbon being a bit of a pain. It is um, giving me very little room to move. And it would be ideal to be able to disconnect it, but if you did that, you would lose all of your extinguishing uh, coolant. Sorry. Right, I think that's probably about the right angle. So this is the bung that needs to come out. Let's just move that mat, take that mat out of the way so it doesn't get wet. And pull this bung out. And nothing happens. Interesting. Maybe there's nothing in there. But there's nothing coming out. Maybe I didn't run it for long enough. No, nothing coming out. So maybe the time between the um, maybe the time between running it and the last time it pumped out was too small, and there's nothing in there. Okay, so this is a heavy unit. Um, now, as I said, 
by disconnecting, in order to get enough space and room, disconnecting uh, this actually allows me to take the whole window out, um, which was a bit of a surprise the first time it happened. So first thing we're going to do is fetch the internal unit out through. And you can see it's a pretty tight fit through this window. This is a small window though. Now I'm going to rest it on top and then lift it. If I can find the bracket, there we go. Lift it off. And it is heavy, it's 20 kilos combined unit. So you might be better doing that with two people if that's easier. I'm gonna put this window back together now. So that's the Urum AC2401 Cool My Camper um, cooling unit. Uh, they retail for between, I've seen them for 600. Um, if you go via Cool My Camper, they're north of 700. We got ours second hand um, for around 450. Um, and it seems as good as, as, good as new. Um, but well, obviously time will tell on that I guess. Um, hopefully that's really useful. If it was and you'd like to see other tips and tricks videos, please firstly comment in the below anything you any questions you've got, but please do subscribe and like because it really does help the channel. See you soon. Mm -hmm.